<laughs> okay. Uh, some of you are getting replies. Not all of you will get replies, but it's not you. Okay. So let's talk about that for a few minutes. Uh, don't don't necessarily say anything back yet. If you already have, that's fine. But I want to kind of talk about how some Twitter etiquette, which sounds weird, but it's real. Um, okay. So one thing when someone reaches out to you that you don't know on Twitter, they're a little suspicious, which is natural, but you should be as well. So one thing that these guys are doing is they'll check your profile. They'll click on you, they'll see who you are. And I don't know if you guys noticed, um, well, I'm sure, I know we, some of you did notice for sure, is that someone asked if we're robots because we all had, you guys all had the same first tweet about what, what a hashtag is. So that's part of investigating who is tweeting you is that whenever you get a tweet from somebody, if you don't know who they are already, your job is to investigate who they are before you reply, because you don't know what their intentions are. So for instance, Dr. Uh, Wendy Panero, uh, she answered a question that I had posted on this hashtag, and so before I would reply to her, I'm gonna check her out. And there's a couple ways to do that. You can roll your mouse over her name, and then it'll pop up with her bio, how many people she's following, and a little bit more information. So I'm a geoscientist with feet in physics, astronomy, chemistry, and material science. I teach a, at a huge public university. Okay, so she's not saying exactly where she's at, but I'm sure if you read more through her tweets, you probably figured out, but that's not the point. The point is that um, this is kind of her way of saying that, you know, what I say is, is for me, I'm not speaking for the school I work at, or the university I work at. We are fighting in an earthquake. Yeah, exactly. Um, so that is your job and that's what the, anybody you tweet is going to do as well. They're going to check out your bio. That's why I want you to have a bio. The more detail, the more information you can put in your bio without being too specific, the better. The more real they, they'll think you are. So when they click on different people in here and they see you know, they're all student, high school students, it's going to be high school students. If every one of them is the exact same, then you know, it's, it's a little boring. So if you can, you know, put something else in there that, that means something to you. Maybe your favorite animal or your favorite Thing to do on the weekends or whatever, I don't know. You don't have to, but I would encourage you to put a little bit more about yourself. Or maybe your favorite subject in, in school, even if it's not science, okay? I, I'm not gonna be offended by that. I encourage you to, to be honest. Um, all right, so when it comes to um, replying to somebody, well, first of all, if you tweet somebody for the first time, it's always good to introduce yourself. Hey, I'm Adam, I'm a high school student. I had a question about exoplanets or whatever their topic is that they're talking about and, and then ask them the question okay and also include that but give a short intro of who you are your purpose and then ask the question that helps them understand more of who this is at this time we need Ms. Alt's homeroom coach Clifton's homeroom and coach Daniel's homeroom please report to the library for pictures Ms. Alt, Coach Clifton, and Coach Daniel's home rooms to the library, please. Um, anyway, so part of them investigating you is if you, if you introduce yourself and then they click on your bio and they see that it's consistent, then that's going to be good too. So that's that's important. So <coughs> now, these buttons down here, I haven't really talked about what these are. Um, this is a, the reply button. Okay, this is retweet. This is like. Uh, and this, these two are to save it to other, I think might be bookmarks, and I, that's Pocket, which is a tool that I, a, a Chrome extension that I use, uh, but I'll say about later, it's not really relevant, but I'll say about it later. Anyway, so when you reply, it automatically tags them or adds them in a tweet, um, so that you can type in whatever you want to say. When you are, when you are replying to somebody, um, Okay, so you can see it says replying to uh, Mineral Tooth Planet, and then, then you can put in whatever you want to put. Now, tagging somebody in a tweet and replying to them are different. Tags can work two ways. When you tag them, you can put their name at the end of your tweet, or you can put their name at the beginning. If you put their name at the beginning, you're talking directly to them. Okay, if you put their name at the end, you're saying, hey, hey I hope you see this, what I just said, Kevin. So, when you're talking to the scientists, make sure you put their name in the beginning. All right, 
because it's, it's just a little weird to put it at the end if you're trying to ask them a direct question. Otherwise, you're saying, hey, guys, this is what I mean when I say this. Hey, George, did you see what I said? Yeah, that's, that's what it is. When you put their name at the end, that's what you're saying. Okay? So make sure to put their name at the beginning. If you reply, it automatically puts it at the beginning. You don't have to, don't have to worry about that. Um, now, a retweet. A retweet can serve a couple different purposes. You have a retweet, and then you have a retweet with a comment. A retweet can mean you like what they said and you want others to see it. It can also mean, holy crap, did you see what this guy said? And well, those are basically the two. So it can be a positive thing, like I want other people to see what this guy's saying, or because I think it's good, or oh my gosh, can you believe this guy said this? So you have to be careful with retweets, because you might mean, wow, I really like that, or you might mean the other thing, and then people are gonna think, wow, he really likes that. So you have to be careful what you retweet. It's kind of, it's kind of, it's not the best idea to retweet it because you don't like what they said, but you want other people to see it. That's kind of dangerous, because a retweet is also endorsement to a lot, to most people. So if you retweet something, then it's almost as if you said it. So like, if there was some sort of bashing on, I don't know, the school principal or or saying something really obscene about the school principal and you retweet it, then it's the same thing as if you said it and there might be consequences to that. I, I understand it's not a good example because it has to do with free speech and all that, so don't, don't stress, but I think you understand what I'm saying. So retweeting it is almost as if you said it, so be careful when you do that. Uh, retweet with a comment. These are really good to use because when you retweet with a comment, it, it serves two purposes. Um, or it can serve many purposes, actually. You can actually say, wow, this is awesome. I hope to work on this project in the future, you know, endorsing whatever they're doing. Or say, can you believe this guy said this? This seems really callous or mean or whatever. So it gives you a chance to actually share why you're retweeting it, uh, which can be really good. And it also can serve somewhat as a reply um, at the same time, but no, be careful with that. So replies, retweets. Now, I think I mentioned this a little bit yesterday, but likes, when you like something or when you favorite it, that can serve a couple purposes as well. Likes don't necessarily mean you like it. So just because they like your tweet doesn't mean they actually like it. It means it could mean they're bookmarking it in a way. It could also mean that they, that they wanna make sure that they keep track of this or that they're worried about this or something. So don't be careful when you get excited or worried about likes. Depends on the um, situation. The, the other thing it's used for is to acknowledge that you saw it. So I like this tweet for two reasons. I like that she wrote it because she answered a question I had that I posted. I also uh, hit the like button because I wanted her to know that I saw it because it'll show up in her notifications. So for instance, I'll go to my notifications right here. So, um, so for instance, this person, Christine, she liked she liked the reply that I got from Wendy. Okay, so she thought it was cool, and that gives a message to me that someone liked that tweet. It also gives a message to Wendy that someone liked her tweet. So that's it, it hits several several different things here. So if someone likes your tweet, that's one way of acknowledging that they saw what you wrote. So you know, just keep keep those things in mind. Now, just so you know. What, what that was about was yesterday I tweeted out, hey, uh, if you don't mind, when did you become aware you wanted to be an exoplanet scientist? And of the 49 people who voted, 22% said uh, before they finished high school, uh, 41 said in college before they graduated, and then 16% said during their master's degree, which is another degree after you graduate from college, and then after master's degree, 20%. So most people didn't know that they wanted to be an exoplanet scientist until they were in college and actually after they graduated from their first level of college. <laughs> okay, so now that you have a little bit more information about likes, retweets, replies, and whatnot, it's, it would be ideal firstly if you, if you liked the responses you got, if you got a response, like it first. If you thought the response was cool or helpful or beneficial, retweet it, okay? You should like it first, then retweet it. Um, 
and then you should reply with some sort of thank you. But the thank you should include specifically what they mentioned in the tweet. Don't just say, hey, thanks for the information. Say, thank you for answering my question about such and such. You know, I learned or I find it interesting, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so that's kind of the protocol. Like, retweet if it was helpful, and then reply with a thank you, but be specific with your thank you. You know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, um, what if two people, like, told you, you say, can you, like, say, like, one thank you and put, like, both their names in there? Or if they, thank you, yeah, you can do a, you can reply and then add the other name and then say thank you, both of you, for helping me with this, but be specific about what they answered. Okay, that's fine. Okay, so if you got a reply, go ahead and take care of that. Who all got replies, by the way? Great, 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 great. Now, I, I, when you guys retweet it, make sure you include the class hashtag. Because it may, it's okay, it's okay, you can fix that. Include the class hashtag anytime you retweet anything. Um, and anytime you reply or tweet. Okay, always include the class hashtag. This is going to be a difficult habit to get into, but uh, you'll get it eventually. What so you can unretweet it and then do it again. What if you already used the class hashtag? Um, then then uh, do it anyway. Yeah, just because it'll it'll help me keep track of the conversations. I work really hard to keep up with how people interact with you guys, just so I can know for positive reinforcement and for safety stuff um, to make sure that we know what's going on. I don't know if I talked about this before. Did I talk about blocking people and stuff like that? Okay. If you ever get contacted on Twitter and you're not comfortable with whatever they're asking or saying, let your parents know immediately and then let me know so I can see if we need to take some sort of action. Sometimes people may at you or reply to you and you may not understand that their intent is completely innocent and they're just trying to be welcoming or whatever, but let me see it if it ever makes you feel uncomfortable in any way, and then I can help you interpret what they said and how, how, to, how to feel about what they said. And, and maybe, it, maybe it's something very obvious that, that is an issue, but I, I take this very seriously. We haven't had problems yet in the years I've been doing this, but it, it, there could always be a first time. Yep. Oh, I thought you were gonna tell me you're uncomfortable with something behind that. Sorry, I'm just kidding. Go ahead. All right. I'll give you a couple minutes to finish that up, replies and whatnot. Any questions? Oh, you stupid poop poop. Any work on here? No. Do you reply? What email did you get? What'd you say? Checking this? At this time, we met me, Mr. Dawson's class, uh, Homer and Ms. Caitlin Gitchell, Rachel Hedge, and Eric Hickerson's homerooms to the library. Mark Dawson, 
Caitlin Gitchell, Rachel so, Hedge, and Eric What Hickson. did you learn from this? Can you edit, tweet, and fix it? No. <laughs> you, can, you can delete them and rewrite them, which is what I do all the time. So oh, delete, I, I, delete. Delete. I, I forgot to use the S today. Yeah, so just delete it and rewrite it with that. What if you already saw that? Copy and that's okay. Copy and paste it. Don't put the stuff up on the one. Uh, you'll probably be back, but if you want to, you can. You just <laughs> take a look at it. Um, so. Oh, wait. You got to respond? Yeah. I didn't know. Did you delete your account? What's that? What's So you can then you can say that you can say um, thanks for explaining that it's kind of what I thought it was but I didn't realize that whatever it was you didn't realize. All right, anybody else? Questions, comments, concerns, backflips, tardies, and buddies? Yeah. 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 So what we can do then, so this is Astro Journey. We're going to also include Astro Journey. Did I do it? Yeah. 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 Oh, oh yeah. no, that's no words. Okay, um, everybody done the replies? Yeah. Who, who got a reply? Okay, so let's get back on the hashtag for the conference, which is EXSS4. And I, I found out later that some people, some scientists were actually using EXSS Roman number four. Which is kind of interesting. All right. Um, so, what I want to do now is I'm going to show you guys how to create a Twitter list. Um, Twitter lists are extremely powerful ways to keep up with particular topics. And personally, I think it's pretty safe to say that everybody tweeting on this hashtag is an exoplanet scientist, at least in some form or other. Whether they study the planet, they study the atmosphere of the planet, they study how the planets form, or whatever it is they do. So, um, in fact, there's some really cool images on this hashtag. So what I want you to do, there's a lot of people that aren't here that were here. Is, well, okay, so I'll show you what. To create a Twitter list, uh, you click on an individual, and, and hold on, hold on, hold on, before you actually click, uh, the, there's a really good skill that you need to know with the um, Chromebooks, and that is how to right click. A right click on the Chromebooks is actually a two finger tap, not a press, a two finger tap. So try it, so have your mouse over something and then do a two finger tap. 
over a link. Okay? When you do a two finger tap, it acts like a right click. Okay? And this is an extremely important ability to have because if you scroll down a long ways and you found something you wanted and you click on it, it takes you out of all that work you've done to find that tweet. So if you two-finger tap it, that opens up this right-click option, and you're going to want to open link in new uh, tab. Okay? So open link in new tab, and then it'll pop up on the side, and then you can have access to that without having to go all the way back. So let me show you. All right, so open link in new tab. I come up to where that new tab is, and now I've just got Jake Turner by himself. Okay. When you when you make uh, no, yeah. So anyway, do the two finger tap, which is a right click. Then you're gonna click on the three buttons or the three dots, and you're gonna put add remove from lists. Okay. And then I have a ton of lists. You probably have zero lists, and that's fine. In fact, I've got a problem. Uh, well, I've already, I've already got them on a list, and you can add people to as many lists as you want. Well, that's that's the thing. Um, did you? Go ahead. Okay. Well, correct. All right. They took away one of the features that they used to allow, so we got to backtrack a little bit. All right. So, so come over here to your lists. Is that button there? Yep. Okay. Great. On the left side where it says list, and then where it says create a list. And it may just be this button up here. Go ahead and click create list and call it exoplanets. And then put like, put like if your name is Adam, put Adam's exoplanets. Okay. With they Lawrence. know if they're put on your list? Yes. They will get notified that they're on your list. And, and they're used to that. They understand what that's about. Okay. <clears throat> they should be okay with it. Don't make it private. No, no. Uh, and I'm glad you asked that, actually. Everything you do on Twitter should be completely pu pu public. Obviously, direct messages are not, but every list you make should be public. If your tweets are private, you need to go back and make them, make them public. Yep. Do you need a description where you can see uh, It may require you to make one, if, and you know it's usually enough just to put the name in again. Okay? So you're going to make this list. Yeah? Uh, it's not letting me give you the question. Okay. Um, yeah, well, let me just put it as. Yeah, just put it as. So, put your name in the or exoplanets, whatever. Okay, after you add, or sorry, then go back to the, to the person that you were going to add. Click on the three dots and then add them to that list. Okay. Now I want you, I want you to scroll down and add at least ten scientists to your exoplanet list. Do they have to be on that hashtag? Yes. Well, they don't have to be on that hashtag, but that's going to be the easiest way to know if they're exoplanet scientists. Mm -hmm. We're going to be making a lot of lists through the year, and so this is an important skill to have early on. All right, so the, here's the steps again. For those who need it, here's the steps again. So you're going to right-click or two-finger tap on their name, open link a new tab, go up to the new tab where it's just them, click on the three dots, then add remove from lists, and then click on the list you want them on. You probably only have one list, so that's going to be real easy. Okay. Go back to the hashtag, scroll down, find some more. Okay. 
So if you can see, I've got dozens and dozens of lists, uh, and it's it's been very beneficial for lots of reasons. I'll show you how we'll use lists uh, next time. I'm actually going to add her to this. At this time, we name Ms. Christy Hollinsworth, Ms. Jennifer Howington, Tony Longton, and Coach Hal Hurls, home rooms to the library for pictures, please. Christy Hollinsworth, Jennifer Howington, Tony Longton, and Coach Hal Hurl. Do you miss sign out already? Uh, no, you're good. You might you might be back, but don't no stress. Take your stuff with you. It's not a big deal. Ah, uh, I almost added in a winner inside. So, so whatever name you use, you put one on the name. Oh my gosh, it's blowing up with the script. Don't remember. Yeah, you're gonna you might have to go down quite a ways because a lot of people have already left the conference, so there's not as many people tweeting. Well, just keep doing a bunch. You know, you've got the rest of the period to do this. So if you do more than ten, you're not going to be dinged. If you do less than ten, then you'll be dinged. So just keep going. I wish it alphabetized the list. That would be nice. Yikes, this guy's bio is not in English, but his tweets are. He's got 20,000 followers. That sure beats my 8,000. I'm looking at him. He had 8,000 followers. On my personal Twitter, yeah. Wow. All of the students. <laughs> Actually, very few of them are students, thankfully. Most of them are teachers and scientists. Exactly. Yeah, I have lots of great discussion with scientists. They like to get involved with you guys when they can. So. So. Taylor, you want to know something cool? I do. Okay, so my grandpa, he used to be a NASA scientist. Really? Yeah. That's he pretty sweet. Well, that explains why your mom's a science teacher. I guess. I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? Seems pretty logical to me. She's just really smart. Well, yeah. And I'm sure her dad helped to inspire her interest in science. Who knows? Probably. I know. Agree. Most likely. How's that? Take that. Yeah. No, I'm not. <laughs> yeah, no, that's what it is. I got eight more. I'm going to change my name. Is this giving the Huh? 
Yeah, don't fall in. It'd be awkward if you did. Uh, your preferred pronouns. Uh, it's a real thing. It, it, it seems annoying to some of us, but it's a real thing. Like, it, it, I don't know if you've noticed, but I, I have a women scientist Twitter list. Zach, so let me show you. It's kind of um. So if you added the maximum. Well, well, I don't make them. I don't. I have one for everybody, and then I have one specifically for women. And I actually have a whole bunch of lists, but I'll explain it in just a second. Hold on. Let me mark this one up. All right, so because because I don't know, someone may that I see on Twitter, I don't know for sure if they're a male or a female. I mean, it seems pretty obvious most of the time, but because this day and age, and try and respect people for who they are and who they want to be, um, here's my, uh, where is it? So here's my women's Twitter list, women in science. Sorry if I have misidentified your gender. I will remove you from the list if, uh, if it's supposed to be if asked, not is asked. Because yeah, you don't know, but if they've said in their bio, he, him, her, or he, him, his, or she, he, she, her, it, his, no, I can't even do it. She, her, what else is there? So you think that they might find it weird that you have a list of men and women? Oh, no. No, they, like, lots, look at how many subscribers I've got on this. So I've got dozens and I've got a couple dozen uh, people here who subscribe to my list because they want to, they want to know they may want to talk specifically or get the opinion of specifically a woman who's a scientist. So it's pretty normal. In fact, look at the rest of my list. So we've got NGSS power. I've got weather, exoplanet, awesome, astrophysicist, this is science. Um, the, uh, Mars 2020 are a bunch of scientists that are working on the Mars. Uh, robot that they're going to send up next year. Uh, rocket science, planetary science. Here we go, black and STEM. What do you think that means? Um, well, sorry. No, black and STEM <laughs> means African Americans in STEM in STEM careers, science, technology, engineering, and math. Okay, and that that list was actually created by uh, someone who's black. What's this video? Um, so I, I work really hard to make sure that the list I create are kosher with with people. Like here's my list of LGBTQ scientists. Um, so if I ever have a student who's LGBTQ, I can connect them with scientists who can help answer their questions. Well, it's about understanding your students and trying to help meet their needs. That's why I have my women in scientists list too for, for girls in science who might be interested in pursuing careers. All right. Um, Anyway, so I guess I'll go ahead and talk about it now since we have time. So the benefit of having a Twitter list is so that you can go look at that list anytime you want and see and see what people who are exoplanet scientists or whatever your topic is are saying about the topic right now. So Scott Fleming just tweeted one minute ago. Now keep in mind that these people, scientists are people too, and they are not always tweeting their science, sometimes they're tweeting about other things. So he's saying, oh, our sample from stars uh, that had simultaneous Kepler and galaxy coverage, it's, it's a nice compliment to the Kepler flare studies. <coughs> this UV and sample is at second level. The future paper will compare the UV and optical properties of some of the flares, stay tuned. Okay, so this one is obviously about uh, at least stars discovered by Kepler and Galax um, and could be exoplanet related as well, but not necessarily. 
So if I scroll down through this list, I'll see the most recent tweets from the people on the list that might be about the topic that I wanted to, to look at, which in this case is exoplanets. So if I look at planetary scientists, they're probably gonna be talking about planets in our solar system. And so that's why this list is beneficial. Plus, you can make a list and you don't have to follow everybody on it. Um, you don't have that desire, but it's, you know, it's kind of open for interpretation. So oftentimes, like uh, on Monday, I may say, okay guys, get on Twitter, get on your exoplanet list. And then so what you'll do is you'll get on Twitter, you'll click your list, click on exoplanets, and then you'll see what's being said by those scientists recently, okay? So if you haven't added your 10 to the list already, go ahead and keep working on that. And if you've added your 10, then um, I'm all right, we're chilling until all the classes over today. I'm gonna scroll down a ways to because there's so few scientists today. At this time, we need Coach Patterson, Miss Tiffany Peters, Miss Ginger Regions, and Miss Rachel Stevens on rooms to the library, please. Coach Patterson, Miss Tiffany Peters, Miss Ginger Regions, and Miss Rachel Stevens. <laughs>
reason. Make sure you take out the jacks of the stick and stuff into you. Apparently she thinks she's gonna make it back to her belt. Yeah, I know. 